Hello, today I'm going to discuss John Gottman's Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and their antidotes. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse sounds quite dramatic, it's a little bit of a mouthful, but it's actually a metaphor depicting the end of times. Now, Gottman used this metaphor to describe communication styles that can predict the end of a relationship. John Gottman is an American psychological researcher and therapist. He's known for his work on relationship analysis through scientific direct observations, many of which were published in peer-reviewed journals. Now, Gottman can predict a relationship failure with over 90% accuracy and has researched relationships for over 40 years. So let's look at the four horsemen and the antidotes. The first and most common horseman is criticism. Being critical is often the expression of pent-up, unresolved anger. Criticism is different from a complaint. A complaint focuses on a specific issue, but criticism is an attack on your partner's personality or character. Criticisms often start with the word you, for example, you don't care, you always put others first, you should have finished by now, you never show any interest in me, you can almost see the wagging finger in front of your partner's face. Now, criticisms also tend to be generalisations as you'll frequently hear phrases such as you never or you always. Criticism can also have devastating effects because it makes the victim feel attacked, rejected and hurt. If you find that you and your partner are critical of each other, don't assume your relationship will fail. But the problem with criticism is that when it becomes prevalent, it actually opens the door for the other horseman. The second horseman is contempt. What differentiates contempt from criticism is the intention to insult and psychologically abuse your partner. When we communicate in this way, we treat others with disrespect, call them names, throw insults and use body language such as eye-rolling and sneering. So with this horseman, you will hear phrases such as you're stupid, you're disgusting, you're incompetent and so forth. You might also hear hostile humour, mockery and ridicule. So with this horseman, you're basically throwing insults into the heart of your partner's sense of self. And when we communicate in this way, the person on the receiving end is made to feel worthless. Now, according to Gottman, contempt is the single greatest predictor of a relationship breakdown. He's even referred to contempt as sulfuric acid for love, as it's the most destructive of the four horsemen. Let's look at an example. You're tired. I've been with the baby all day and all you do when you come home from work is sit on the sofa and play those stupid video games. I don't have time to deal with another child. You're pathetic. The third horseman is defensiveness, which is typically a response to criticism or contempt. When your partner insults you, it's natural to want to defend yourself from the attack. The fact that defensiveness is an understandable reaction to criticism or contempt is one reason it's so destructive. But defensiveness tends to escalate a conflict rather than resolve it. Let's look at an example. Did you call Phil to let him know we're not going for a meal tonight? You promised this morning. I was just far too busy. You know how busy my schedule is. Why didn't you just do it? The defensive partner in this example isn't taking responsibility and is making excuses. Rather than taking responsibility, they blame their partner, which obstructs communication and won't allow healthy conflict management. Instead, it opens a door for other horsemen. The fourth horseman is stonewalling. Stonewalling occurs when the listener withdraws from the interaction. They shut down and stop talking. Metaphorically, they're building a wall between them and their partner. Now, it takes time for the negativity created by the first three horsemen to become overwhelming enough that stonewalling becomes an understandable response. Stonewalling is a result of feeling physiologically flooded. So when we stonewall, we're not in a physiological state where we can discuss things rationally. Now, when Gottman interviewed people who stonewalled, they claimed they were trying to be neutral and not make things worse. 
They didn't actually realise that stonewalling itself is a very powerful act that conveys disapproval, icy distance and even smugness. The message to the partner is, I'm withdrawing and disengaging from any meaningful interaction with you. Now, if one partner refuses to communicate whenever conflict arises, it can be very difficult to heal a relationship. Being able to identify the four horsemen in your relationship is a necessary first step to eliminating them, but this knowledge isn't enough. Gottman provided us with four proven antidotes that you'll need to utilise in order to break through the negativity of the horsemen. Now, if you can put the antidotes to use, then your relationship is almost certain to improve dramatically. It won't always be easy, but the antidotes do work. It will take courage, strength and trust to use them. It's also important you don't just intellectually understand the antidotes, but you actually practice them so often they become available to you in moments you need them most. So let's look at the antidotes to the four horsemen. The antidote for criticism is to use a soft or gentle start-up. Avoid using a you statement such as you did, which feel like an attack and indicate blame, and instead talk about your feelings using I statements and express what you need in a positive way. Let's look at an example. You always talk about yourself, you're so selfish. I'm feeling left out of our talk tonight and I need to process my day, it's been difficult. Can we please talk about my day? Notice that the antidote starts with I feel and leads into I need and then it respectfully asks to fulfil that need. There's no blame or criticism which prevents the discussion from escalating into an argument. The antidote to contempt is to build a culture of appreciation and respect in your relationship. And there are a few ways to do this, such as expressing appreciation, gratitude, affection and respect for your partner. Gottman discovered the magic ratio of five to one. Basically, if you have five or more positive interactions for every one negative interaction, then you're making regular deposits into your relationship bank account. For example, you forgot to load the dishwasher again, you are so lazy. I understand that you've been busy lately, but could you please load the dishwasher when I work late? I'd really appreciate it, thank you. This antidote is a respectful request and it ends with a statement of appreciation. The antidote to defensiveness is to take responsibility even if only for part of the conflict. For example, did you call Phil to let him know that we're not going for a meal tonight? You promised this morning. Oh gosh, I completely forgot. I knew I was going to be busy today and I should have asked you. Let me call him right now. By taking responsibility, this partner prevents the conflict from escalating. When you take responsibility even for part of the problem, you'll find that you can talk through the issue with your partner. The antidote to stonewalling is physiological self-soothing. In one of Gottman's research studies, he interrupted couples after 15 minutes of an argument and told them he needed to adjust the equipment. He asked them not to talk about their relationship, but to just read magazines for half an hour. When the couple started talking again, their heart rates were much lower and their interaction was much more respectful and productive. So let's look at what happened during that half hour. Well, each partner physiologically soothed themselves by reading the magazines and stopping the discussion. As they felt much calmer, they were able to return to the discussion in a much more respectful and rational way. Therefore, the antidote to stonewalling is to practice physiological self-soothing. And the first step of self-soothing is to stop the discussion. Look, we've been through this over and over again. Darling, I'm sorry to stop you there, but I'm feeling really overwhelmed and upset right now. Can we take a break for 20 minutes and then we can talk? So the break should last at least 20 minutes because it will take that long before your body physiologically calms down. Spend your time doing something self-soothing, such as listening to music, playing a video game, going for, for a small walk or reading. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as you feel it's soothing. 
Now that you know what the four horsemen are and how to counteract them with their proven antidotes, you've got the essential tools to manage conflict in a healthy way. For more psychology lectures, please click and watch the video on the screen now and I look forward to seeing you soon.